I finally have Nilu. So you're playing Genshin, you're doing some 10 pulls, and you get five star Nilu. Now, what do you get with Nilu besides my most favorite character in all of Genshin? We got the Nilu shirt on, we got the Nilu figure, we got the Nilu acrylic. I even changed the Discord name to In Nilu, we trust, in honor of Nilu. So, She's my favorite character in case you didn't know. But what do you get with Nilu besides my favorite character? Well, Nilu is a sword wielding hydro user whose entire kit revolves around making blooms bigger and stronger. And in this video, we are going to look at the basics of Nilu. Now, now buckle in, this is gonna be a long video. I'm not gonna cut much out, so be prepared. Now, just like we do in every single one of these videos, we are going to look at the current build of Nilu, specifically my Nilu that I got last night. So my Nilu in her gorgeous new outfit is level 90 out of 90 with 70,000 HP, uh, 800 attack, 1,000 defense, 235 EM. Her current crit split is uh, 11 over 106 with 109 ER. Her weapon is a level 50 key. I did not pre-farm quite enough to level 90 it. Uh, artifacts, two piece VG, two piece tenacity. Constellations, like I said, she is C1. And then her talents, four, six, nine. Now, real quick, we're going to look at her passives because her passives are what make her entire play style work. So her first passive, Court of Dancing Petals. This is the Bountiful Core passive. The way that this works is that if you have only Hydro and Dinjo characters in your team, whenever you use her skill and the fourth step is skill and not normal attack, it is going to activate the Golden Chalice's bounty for 30 seconds. If one of your on-field characters takes Dinjo damage from like a bloom, then it's gonna increase their EM by 100. This effect turns normal blooms into Bountiful Cores. Now, what are Bountiful Cores? They are blooms that are bigger, do more damage, explode instantly. They are very, very good. They take a bloom from doing okay damage to doing a ton of damage. But this only works when your entire team is Hydro and Dendro. Also, the Bountiful Cores cannot be burgeoned or hyper bloomed. I believe that that also counts for enemies. So if you have like a Pyro Slime that jumps onto a Bountiful Core, it is not going to burgeon it. It will just explode and deal damage to everything in its AOE, including your own characters. Now her second passive, Dreamy Dance of Aeons, is going to give a buff to the damage of Bountiful Cores based on her max HP. To get the full amount from this passive, you wanna to try to get around 75,000 max HP on Nilu. It's like, I believe that the actual math comes down to like 74 and some change, but just saying 75K is a much easier target to hit than the actual numbers. So, now we are going to go look at how Nilu's kit actually works. We're going to go into this domain. I am just stalling to let Nilu do this wonderful, beautiful idle animation. Let's go into the domain. So first we're going to talk about our normal attacks, right? Normal attacks are going to be pretty standard. She does only do a three hit, which is interesting. Most characters do more than that. And then her charge attack is going to do a flurry. It does do physical damage for her skill. Her skill is a four step dance and the fourth step is the one that matters most. You can really do anything for one, two, and three. Well, one has to be a tapping of the skill. So you can really do anything for two and three, whether it's a normal attack or a skill, but the fourth one matters most. If you do skill and then you follow it up with normal attacks, making the fourth step a normal attack, we get Hydro Infusion onto Nilu. And then it also increases her range a little bit with the final slice, the third uh, normal attack. We'll get a little bit of range but it just does Hydro Infusion. This does come into play later on, once we do a different version of the skill, but for the most part, it just does Hydro Damage. If we do a different fourth step of the dance, if we do skill all the way through, so skill, normal attack, normal attack, skill, or just skill, 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 then we activate the Bountiful Core mechanic. We will get this aura ring around our on-field character, which does apply hydro. It doesn't do any damage, but it applies hydro. And if we have only dendro and hydro characters in our party, we create bountiful cores whenever we make blooms. The bountiful cores have all of the bonuses that we talked about earlier. So this lasts for 30 seconds. So you can do her uh, E all the way through to activate bountiful core. And then whenever her skill cooldown is up, you can 
go use the hydro infusion to hit enemies affected with dendro to create blooms so that's what i meant by you can do something later on after you do the bountiful core version of this dance now you will see there's a lot of stuff going on here. I am going to kind of use some Bountiful Cores real quick to finish out this domain. Coco is hitting 38k per Bountiful Core, which is crazy. This is with C1, not even C2. So I do want to show a non-Bountiful Core. And what I mean by that is if we take Yao Yao out and we put Kuki in, then we can no longer create Bountiful Cores because we have an Electro character. If we go in and we make Blooms, you're going to notice that they don't explode immediately and we can hyper bloom them because we can hyper bloom them and because they don't explode immediately these are not bountiful cores so now we're going to look at nilu's burst and what nilu's burst is going to do is that we are going to get this beautiful animation right of course and then we are going to get hydro damage it is going to do hydro damage an instance of hydro damage and it is going to put this mark on the enemy after a certain amount of time it will do another instance of hydro damage meaning that with one burst we can create multiple blooms so this can be really really good that's kind of all that it does it just gives us another chance to make blooms as well as nilu doing a respectable amount of damage with uh, her burst not having anything built into actual dealing hydro damage so now we're going to look at artifacts and for artifacts it's kind of weird because building hp on a character early game is not super easy there's no sets or anything like that so I'm going to say four piece instructor set this is going to get up Nilu's EM and it's going to give EM to our other characters. So you can still do Bountiful Core early game. It's just not going to be as strong. It scales much better once you get into the higher levels and the better artifact sets because Bountiful Core scales off of your level of your character creating it and the EM of the character creating it. That level is very important. You need to level 90 all of the characters involved in a Bountiful Core team because they're going to be creating, everybody's going to be creating blooms, right? Now for the main stats, I would still say HP. I would still try and get HP, HP, and HP on these instructor pieces with some EM maybe in the substats and some ER in the substats. But like I said, until you get like two piece tenacity, two piece VG, it's much harder to scale Bountiful Core damage up, as well as you might not be to the levels that it's gonna scale up tremendously either. For weapons, of course we have Key. Now, Key gets up HP as its main stat, and unfortunately there's only one other sword in the game that gets up HP as its main stat, and that is going to be Dotkan's Assistant. Now, Dotkan's Assistant has only been on two banners, I believe, so if you don't have it, it's completely understandable. It's it's such a weird weapon that it's like really good on Layla, Nilu, and Kirara. And that's kind of it. If you don't have Key or Dotkan's Assistant, then you can, of course, use something like Iron Sting. Iron Sting is also a great free-to-play weapon. It is going to get up EM, so at that point, you really would be building a hybrid Nilu between EM and HP. You also have something like Favonius for ER, so you can use her burst more often, or Sacrificial, which I believe would be better because it resets her skill. So you have more instances of Hydro to create more balloons, so you could run Nilu kind of on field as your on field Hydro Bloom driver. Now, in the next video, we are going to talk more about teams, and we're even going to talk about Vape Nilu. However, I do want to say that it is very difficult to build a team for Nilu that is Bountiful Core without very specific characters, right? The team that I've been running in this, being Nilu, Nahida, Yao Yao, and Coco, is a standard, very good Nilu Bountiful Core team because it runs two healers. Now, my Yao Yao and Coco are both built for EM, but having both of them, I am able to keep the entire party's HP up because Blooms or Bountiful Cores do self damage. Even with them not being built for HP, I am still able to keep my entire team's health up. If you're trying to run this early game, then you might be stuck with like Nilu, Barbara, Kale, and Dendro Traveler. Barbara would have to be built full healer with a ton of ER so you can bring her, use her burst, and then take her back off the field having Kale and Dendro Traveler built full EM. It will be much harder to run that team because you don't have as much healing to keep your party healthy. So make sure that you keep that in mind if you're trying to use Nilu early on. I have done it. I have been successful doing it on like my EU account that I haven't touched in so long, but it is much harder to do than running like this. So that is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments, myself or somebody else be sure to answer it, and I will see you in the next video.